<clears throat> all right we're uh a few minutes early i don't know what's going on this is some real bizarro land bullshit it's almost mm -hmm. like we have nothing else to do right <laughs> oh man <laughs> how dare you yeah call us yeah. out <laughs> yeah how dare you speak <laughs> such true words around here um welcome to the show anyone who's watching uh we're here um with some people from notorious dmg and some people from defenders of cobalt and our bestest bud jeremy there from grim and perilous studios um and we're here to play some tiny dungeons um we played last saturday and it was a magnificent fucking train wreck um <laughs> It was supposed to be a, a Western honky tonk theme dungeon dive slash heist, and it turned into a taco run in a bar fight. Um, <laughs> Mostly in a bar fight. So you, it was, you call that a fight? I don't know. I mean, did you ditch the tacos <laughs> That's a also? generous term. Uh, there, they they got plenty of tacos. Jake got a tostada and then folded it up <laughs> like a taco, and then denied that it was a taco. Oh yeah, those curved tostada sandwiches are, are yeah. To die for. Yeah. Never find a hamburger. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, with that, we're back tonight. Uh, we're gonna play a little more kind of straightforward kind of dungeon delve. Um, so I you say. So I say. Yeah. We'll see what happens. I First did. Of all, are there any taco trucks nearby? None. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're gonna have to travel far for the taco truck. Yes. You turn around, leave the dungeon. And <laughs> I definitely tried to Allen proof. The dungeon tonight. is a taco truck. The dungeon is the taco truck. <laughs> My God. Um, the truck down. Yeah. So let's uh, let's just go through and do some quick intros. Maybe plug something if you want to, and then we'll just get into the game. Uh, so I'm Chuck. Defenders of Cobalt primarily. Uh, here on Notorious DMG, and then also every other Friday, I'm a resident GM for Zweihander, uh, where I run the game The Bloody Marches for three of the people that you see on screen currently. Um, let's go. Let's just go down the road. Joe, you're next. Uh, I'm Joe, also from the Defenders of Cobalt. I play in the Zweihander game that we do on the Zweihander main channel. Uh, also, I'm the DM for our 5th edition Blades and Pepper Shakers game on our channel every other Friday. And I'm playing a martial artist goblin that's hard to hit, I hope. We'll see. <laughs> uh, nice. Next down the, the row is Jeremy. Hi, I'm Jeremy Jones. I'm from Grim and Perilous. I'm a giant nerd. I love these nerds. I'm going to be playing a mean, bastard-ass old dwarf. Nice. I'm all about that. Very nice. Dan. Hey, Dan, defenders of Cobalt. Uh, I bring poor dice rolls to the table. That's Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I'm playing an elf hunter, so hopefully there will be a lot of pew, pew, pew. Let's hope so. Uh, carrying over or carrying down would be Jake. Carrying down sounds accurate. Uh, I'm Jake with the Defenders of Cobalt. Um, uh, I guess, you know, go to our Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Cobalt Defenders. Hooray. Uh, today I'll be playing uh, an elf doctor uh, whose nickname is Knives. And um, nice. he thinks that's that spelled the truth strange. Is told. No. Just, it, just right up. Yeah. It does have air quotes above it. Ah, so okay. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. Yeah. So that's about it. Cool. Uh, and then last but not least, Jeff. Uh, yeah, I'm Jeff. Uh, I'm with uh, Adventures in Lollygagging. We do a uh, couple of Zweihander things. Uh, like Chuck, we do one over on the main channel uh, every Thursday at like 9 central. And then we also do another podcast, audio only. It comes out every Monday. Just search for Adventures in Lollygagging wherever you get podcasts. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also uh, GM a Mutant Year Zero campaign, Gen Lab Alpha. We've been doing that on our own channel. So twitch.tv slash the lollygaggers. Mm. Uh, we do that Fridays at 8 central. Yeah. So, and I'm playing, uh, I'm playing a bear uh, <laughs> whose name is the roadie. 
and nice. uh, he is trying to recover uh, from some bad decisions uh, during the last uh, <laughs> during the last adventure, where he kind of fell off the wagon pretty much as hard as somebody could fall off the wagon. Yeah, perfect. So, Absolutely. Right. Get a little extra in your tacos. It was great. <laughs> a little bit. A little bit. Uh, glorious. Too, much beer, too many poisonous spores. Uh, well, I don't know about beer. It wasn't too much beer. Uh, he did come out of that looking <laughs> like a bear that just ran through a fresh powder of snow. I actually don't think I drink at all. Like, no, my problem. No, it's an uh, entirely different issue. Breathe that good <laughs> clean air. Yeah. They just kept. He just kept giving us the bags. And you kept <laughs> asking it's for them. It's entirely Chuck's fault. You know? yeah. yeah, the enabler over here. Absolutely. That's what happens when we loot nothing but musicians? Also. Yeah, that's also <laughs> right, true. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. What do we find in their boots? <laughs> Oh, man. More cocaine, I guess. That's that's it. <laughs> They're practically made out of it. Yeah, really? Oh, man. It's just a, a nasal cavity and a giant bag of cocaine attached to They're it. Like pinatas. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. So, you all um, on your touring, whatever the reason is, have decided to take it upon you to try and claim a legendary prize the golden banana uh through intense bribing handing out plenty of plenty of eight balls uh and searching high and low definitely the high parts um <laughs> you have managed to find the uh the tomb of the golden banana as it says and you find yourself standing outside of the entrance to this tomb ready to delve in and claim your prize, a four-foot-long, 100-pound, pure gold banana. Don't do the fucking calculations to see if that density matches up with the size and the weight, because I am sure it doesn't. I math real bad. But it's going to get you a shit ton of money. So, uh, let's... Um, I guess we got the setting. Any any questions on that? So it's a tomb. What does the door look like? Is it just is it is it ornate? Is it scary? It you know? is it's it's pretty intense. The door of this, you find yourself in this cave. In the back of the cave, you know this is gonna be the entrance to the tomb. It is a giant skull. Probably like 18, 20 feet 20 foot tall skull coming out of the side of this cave. Its mouth is the entrance, but its mouth is currently closed. Carved into this thing's forehead are the words. The pass... Or, uh, let me double check to make sure I tell you the exact truth. Speak, friend, and enter? Uh, it does not say speak, friend, and enter. That would be fantastic. Damn. Bring bring tacos and enter. Uh, no, the, the <laughs> phrase carved into the skull of this thing is... The password is monkey. Ah. So if I just say monkey, do you say monkey? Yeah. Nothing happens. Mm. Is monkey. <laughs> Nothing happens. Damn. Um, so how well known is this cave? Is this like something that we've tracked down through? Through oh, yeah. great through turmoil. Investigating? Yeah. Or is this just like the cave that's sitting there that no one fucks? No, this is dies? this is some big secret shit right here. Like, okay, yeah. All right. So I suppose the real question then is, who is the bastard ass culture that made this here entrance? What's their word for monkey? Good point. The uh, uh, the skull replies back. Hmm. I believe it was dwarves, but I do not know the dwarven word for monkey. Wouldn't I it do. be in whatever the language that it's written in above the door? Well, I'll say the dwarven equivalent. It basically translates to shit flingers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the giant skull on the wall replies back. I'm sorry, kind sir. That will not get you where you need to be. This is the password like we have to physically catch a monkey for you. I hope not. I have no hands that I could hold this monkey with. 
I have no digestive system to eat it. So the bear, Rody, is going to start <laughs> acting like a monkey. I'm just going <laughs> to... I'm going to get very confused about my identity, but I'm still going to do it. Uh, nice. The door gives a little chuckle like, Ah, golly, uh, jolly good. I did not know that you had a, a mime amongst your troubadours. Sure. He what is, is one of the greatest of the land. He, uh, uh, very so. Do we have anything else? Uh, is there, like, if we, it's just that we're at the end of a cave, we're inside a cave, big skull talking to us. That's yep. odd. Is there anything else uh, that we might be able to? The the only in the, area? the only other thing, like I said, it's a nondescript cave, dark, damp. Mm. Like you said, the giant skull. The the only well, other than the giant fucking skull that is now talking to you, um, the only other thing that stands out is carved into its forehead are the words: "The password is monkey." Wait, wait, wait! I got it. The dwarven okay. word for monkey is shit flinger, so we need to fling our faces at it. Dear uh, sir, how uncouth! I would ask you kindly not to. Well, I'd make you a deal. You tell us what you mean by your stupid riddle, and I won't fling my shit on you. What riddle is it that you speak of? The password is monkey. What? It's written on your face. (laughs) Did you get drunk and somebody wrote some stupid shit on your head? You're saying that there's... Can Can you do me a favor and repeat this word for me? Yes. Monkey. Monkey. Nothing Nothing happens. happens. No. Um, can we go inside? Ah, there is requirements that I am unsure of that you must meet first before I can allow you to enter, kind sirs. Says the password is monkey. What are those, uh, requirements? I, I do not know them. Joe, what did you say? It says the password is monkey. What does it say? Where does it say it again? Uh, above the door. Above the door, above my head. Not so yeah. much here, or here even, but right around here. You're saying that carved into my face are words. Yes, and they say the password is monkey. You're saying that carved into my face are the words, the password is monkey. Ah! As his mouth just forces itself wide open and forms into an archway. Yes. Oh, okay. There we go. We just had to abuse them enough to that. I that's a good thing. I didn't think I was going to be able to squeeze one out, so I'm real happy that worked that way. <laughs> kind of dehydrated. It would have been bad. Eating light for this journey. <laughs> yeah. You all proceed. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. You all. Does it stay open? Yeah. Oh, awesome. good. Absolutely. Even better. Yeah. You all. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, okay. No, go ahead. You all move in through this thing's mouth, now doorway, uh, and you travel a little deeper. This cave kind of snakes back and forth a little bit. You can feel it descending, sloping down ever so slightly. And eventually it opens up into this giant cavern. Um, the, the center of the cavern, uh, there's a giant chasm that splits it. Uh, directly across your path. Uh, and this chasm's maybe 75 feet. So giant cavern. You're looking up hundreds of feet up. Um, if you were to move up to the edge of the chasm and looks down, it's just darkness. You can't see anything. But stretching across this chasm is a narrow bridge, maybe 15 feet across. No railing to it, just a stone bridge. Uh, the big oddity here is hanging above the bridge off of chains that just come out of the darkness. You can't see where they attach to anything above, um, are six brass monkey statues hanging from these chains. And these things are as funky. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, it's, what, what did you ask? This room is it round like a barrel? 
<laughs> it is. Yeah, are they like in this pose? Like, the uh, the they are in that pose. Uh, awesome. It looks like each one of them stands maybe five to six feet tall from foot to bottom of the foot to the tip of the head. And they look quite massive. They're uh, intri- intricately carved, hanging from these giant heavy chains coming down from the ceiling. Are and they, they all like... In a line, in a line the bridge. directly over the center of the bridge, going along with the bridge. And they're okay. maybe their feet are maybe like 12 feet uh, from the bridge. Ooh. Are there any rocks or anything like decently heavy rocks? Sure, like absolutely. It? I guess another thing I need to point out looking across the chasm on the opposite wall. So if you go across the chasm on the bridge on the opposite wall, you do see a stone archway carved into it. Uh, but uh, Jeff, yeah, you uh, do see uh, the there's rocks setting here and there of varying size. So I'm just going to start throwing some onto the bridge just to see. Okay. Looking for like pressure plates or something like that. Okay. Uh, you spend some time tossing rocks here and there, uh, being kind of methodical about it, making sure there's nothing fishy going on. Uh, and you don't find anything. You don't see anything that would give you pause. Anything else of note in the room that might be useful to us? Uh, looking at what you see right now, that's just what I've described at this point. Okay. Are these uh, statues hitting low enough that we'd be able to like reach up and hit them? Well, the bottom of their feet's like across. at 12 feet. So okay. if you can jump up and slap something that's 12 feet tall, Someone then yes. Someone want to get on my shoulders? <laughs> Got to touch the brass monkey. Oh, shit. Well, uh, hey, tiny. Dustin, thanks for coming by. Hey, man. So uh, what was that again, Joe? Uh, I'm a tiny goblin, so I don't think... I'll be able to reach that high. That's fair. Yeah. Do we have any rope with us or anything that we can try? We'll say you all have standard adventure packs, which would have... 50 feet of rope in it. Sure, yeah. I attempt Mm -hmm. to, like, throw and loop it around one of the arms on the the nearest monkey. Sure. Give me a... uh, What's your occupation? Uh, Occupation? Yeah. Like, my trade? Your trade. I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, Exotic fish breeding. I think that applies here. I think I would I think say so. so. Like it, it's it's close have, to fishing. It's like you fishing. Would, it's supposed to yeah. cast. Well, and then yeah. sailors have exotic to be ways. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> and God. The fish aren't exotic. <laughs> it's how you get them to breed. That's what exotic is. Exotic. Yes. <laughs> like there's fucking oh, whips. Wow. And... That <laughs> yeah. How many bottles of wine should I pour in their tanks? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, Joe, you can go ahead and uh I'll let okay. you just un without a check, you can toss your rope up around one of these things' arms. Awesome. Doing anything with that? Or just uh, you got I a rope on I, it. Like loop it around so it's on either side and try and pull and see if it does anything. Uh it sways. Um you can yeah, see it's it's, it's hand that hooks up like this is in there pretty good. Uh I suppose, Jeff, if you went to one end of the bridge and lifted one and then let it hit, it may do the <laughs> Like a desk, uh, the like Newton the, ball thing. Yeah. yeah, that's it. Yeah, yep. Um, I suppose while I have that looped around, it's it feels pretty solid, like it's yeah. not moving. Yeah, well, right. it's it's swaying. It's on a chain, so right. it's got it's movement not like to it. Pulling lower. No, it's not. It's it's staying like yeah. the same distance from the yeah. ceiling. Yeah. Uh, if that's the case, I'm just gonna hold on to the the rope, maybe tie myself off to it, and then start walking across the bridge. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, you make it across the bridge without any trouble. Sweet. Oh, well, that's convenient. Uh, so I, I guess I'll. If, at least I guess if I'll you weigh cross. People who are less than me. I'll cross the bridge next. Don't no. worry, I'm willing to die. No trouble. Okay. These things are heavy enough that if they were to fall, they would destroy the bridge. Correct. Um, are you familiar with engineering and mason work? I make the rock go, so I mean, we'll say yes. No, give, no we'll say no. <laughs> Sound engineering, maybe. Well, <laughs> give me a check with disadvantage, and then I'll give you an answer. Okay. If you do stage tech stuff, you're familiar with heavy objects falling. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fair no. One. How many bands uh, has he been fired from? <laughs> That's the uh, real question. You're not. Uh, you're not sure. 
Uh, okay. You do feel uneasy about it, but uh, maybe as long as they don't all hit it once, it might be okay. Okay. All right. Well, uh, okay, I'll go. Okay. Uh, who all hasn't gone across yet? I haven't. So I, I have not I will. either. Yeah, I'll follow okay. too. You all make it across this 15-foot-wide bridge with no ledge over what seems to be a bottomless uh, pit, bottomless chasm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely fine. Nothing bad happens. You're now on the other side of this giant room, uh, and there's a stone archway that continues deeper. Anybody else have a sinking feeling that we're going to be running out of here, and then that thing's going to doom us? Yep. I think. Mm -hmm. Is there any place mm -hmm. to tie off rope on the yeah. other side of that bridge? I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. On the other side of the bridge. Like, is there any way that we could tie a rope on both sides? Like, we got a lot of rope. That would be a tough one because there's no real. I mean, I suppose to tie them to. Yeah, I suppose you know, a standard kit, adventures kit, at least in in most games, comes with like climbing gear. And like spikes or something to drive into. Uh, I'll say if you all commit all of your rope, uh, you can anchor on one side of this chasm and the other one with your rope with uh, your climbing uh, little pittance and hammer. Mm, that sounds dangerous. No, you always need some fucking rope. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we want to do that. There. Oh, shit. Dustin's talking shit on the kobolds for that DCC oh, tournament. Man. Uh, we'll catch you later, Dustin, but we're totally going to kick your ass when it comes to uh, Crawl to Death uh, we're gonna next get the Saturday. Perfect score. Yeah, we're it's gonna probably going to be zero. The fastest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to sprint to death. Yeah. So, <laughs> back on this game, what are you guys doing? So there's a new uh, archway. Is that yeah. you there's an archway. You continue on. You continue down it. Um, if you all wanted to commit your rope, you could make a, a, a line going across the chasm. Mm, nah. Okay. You continue on. Yeah. We might need that rope yep. later. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure we'll need it there too, but <laughs> we probably need more rope than we have at the end of the day. Right. Okay. So you all continue on down this next tunnel. It sinks it further. Go ahead. Is it dark in here? Like, are there any any ambient light or? Um, that is a great question. Uh, high or low? Uh, low. It was high. No, there's not. It's after leaving that main chasm. It is now pitch black. I'll light up a torch with my flint. Hmm. Okay. I got one. Uh, so yeah, you've got a torch going into this dark tunnel that descends deeper in the, uh, into the earth. You start feeling the, uh, the humidity in the air start to rise. It gets stuffy. It starts to get kind of hot. Um, oh, shit. We're in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> um, you start to hear some things that, uh, really kind of throw you off. They're not noises that you would expect to hear. Sound of Florida natives. <laughs> it's like the you start to hear the sound of trickling water, which isn't a big surprise. Um, but you start to hear like birds. Mm. Uh, coming you, from ahead or just from coming from, from ahead? Okay, okay, I'll keep moving forward. Okay, uh, eventually you do uh delve deep enough and you come to these giant double uh like banded wooden doors uh yeah and the hallway giant maybe 12 feet tall got that good arch going hey chris thanks for coming by uh yeah so yeah the tunnel stops at these two giant doors i guess we'll open the door up is it unlocked uh, you go to open it and it doesn't budge. Uh, is it locked? Uh, it does not have any visible lock on it. Are there any more stupid riddles written about here? Uh, you, first glance, you don't see anything. No. I'm going to set it on fire. You said it was wooden. So it is gonna... wooden. It is incredibly damp from the humidity in the air. Okay. 
Oh, I hate Florida. Damn it. I know. Indeed. <laughs> Can't even there for turn the doors years. down. <laughs> <laughs> is there yeah. anything like engraved on this door? It's just a wooden door? No, pair. just a plain like banded wooden door. Someone okay. want to try and hit it particularly hard? I'm going to knock mean, on it really quick. Uh, you knock on it um, and nothing oh. happens. The the outer layer of the door almost feels a little soft. Uh, you're going to guess that the, the high humidity is rotting the wood a little bit. I mean, if you like, I got my axe. I can get to work. I try to come apart. Some of the yeah. edges off of the doors. Maybe it's uh, swollen shut. Mm. That it's seems like a that's a bright idea. All right. So, Jeremy, you're going to give it a go with your axe? I will. All right. I would be quite good with that axe. There you go. Fantastic. Actually, not so good. <laughs> you... See, the humidity's gotten a bowl, so I'm done. <laughs> it's yeah. really uncomfortable. Hands are a little sweaty. Yeah, you can't get a get good... Footing right. Yeah, you don't get a good purchase on it. Uh, through your whacking on this door, you do feel that it's starting to give a little bit, uh, but you haven't put enough oomph into it to really bust this thing open. Are there some, like visible hinges or something on it uh this door would swing away from you and you can tell by that by the fact that you don't see any hinges dang i'm gonna um, i'm gonna go to the door from the hold my beer i mean torch and then <laughs> i'm gonna run at it and just like lower my shoulder in as hard as i can uh so. you're a pretty hefty muscular bear i'll let you roll this at advantage Hell yeah. You got it. Hey, there we you are. shoulder. That, that sounds done. Yeah, you shoulder into this fucking door and it just boom and flies open. Light greets you on the other side of this door along with the wall of just like heat and humidity. Uh, you'd put it like maybe like in the like 90 degree area. Um, oh, it's, it's oppressingly hot and humid. But looking in, you find yourself staring into what seems to be like a tropical forest. Hmm. Peculiar. And I'm around. I picked a bad day to quit doing cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is a, a path that continues forward from the, uh, the door that you opened uh, through the forest. From where we're at, can we see like the walls on the edges of this, or is it does it like an open expanse? Uh, I want you to give me a test. We're going to call this the equivalent of like a uh, perception or awareness test, uh, okay. just to see what you can get. Uh, call it standard, unless you would have something that, or uh, yeah, standard difficulty, unless you got something that would modify that. Uh, one of my traits is perceptive. <laughs> what does uh, that do? Uh, what has been seen cannot be unseen. You gain advantage when testing to gain information about your surroundings. Oh, absolutely. Then roll with advantage. Perfect. Uh, you uh, hit it. Uh, you <laughs> well, can yeah. actually, Oof. when you're looking around, uh, you can actually see that ones. there's a, a handful of things that you see. The first off, this room is illuminated with what looks to be like a photofluorescent or whatever the fuck you call it like fungi like there's giant mushrooms letting off light there's like lichen and mildew on the trees that are letting off light but you can see the walls of this cave and the ceilings have all been painted to match like the rainforest vibe so it's like when you go to the zoo in the back of the animal exhibit they've got it painted to kind of match the the environment and mm -hmm. that's what you see you would guess that this room's maybe 30 40 feet tall 70 feet wide but looking across you can't see how far it is so you're you're guessing this is a rectangular or oval-esque room and you're at one of the the narrow ends of it how wide again uh like 70 ish okay and we're kind of in the middle ish uh you are at one side yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Yes, you would be in like the middle. Okay. Do any of the the trees like hit the ceiling or? Uh, there, be, like, a clearing? there are some trees that have kind of like pushed up against the ceiling and are bending and arching in odd directions. If you look closely in the trees? distance, say that again, Joe. Would I be able to climb one of those trees? Sure. Try and look. 
Uh, see how long this, I want you to uh, give me, through. yeah, if you want to do that, yes. I do want you to give me a standard test for this, just because these trees are kind of slippery and slick with, you know, the sure. humidity and moss and mildew. Uh, but you Man. do hoist yourself up the tree, you peer around, uh, and you, from your vantage point, here is what you see right off the bat. The trail continues on uh, probably like 75% of the length of this cave. You can now see this cave. It's maybe like 300 feet long. So like 70 feet wide, 300 feet long. This trail continues, like I said, like 75%. And then it stops in a clearing that you can see. At about the 50% mark of this cave, you can see there's actual stone bridge that arches over a stream that's flowing from left to right, uh, from right to left in this cave. Yep. Just like out of one of the walls. Into the yeah, air. yeah, that's it, Jeremy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, you can yep. see where this stream starts. There's a like a mouth to a cave where it starts and a mouth to the cave uh, to a cave where it uh, ends. Okay. Do I see anything in the clearing? Uh, no. Do I see a door at the end? Or an archway or anything? Um, you don't. Oh, shit. Uh, Dan. Dan Fox, the man himself. Thanks for coming by. Yeah, oh, damn. We're uh, playing some tiny dungeons, and they're in the, uh, the tomb of the golden banana. Um, and we're going to see how many of these guys end up, ha uh, end up in hammocks by the end of it. It's all of us. Um, Banana hammock. Always wanted me on banana. <laughs> uh, do we see any signs of those birds that we heard? Uh, yeah, birds flying around. You do see some like tropical birds fluttering around here and there. Hmm. Fascinating. Uh, you also looking around for the birds. You can see there are insects buzzing about. Uh, maybe every now and then, those of you who aren't heavily furred slaps a mosquito off your cheek or arm. They're at least of natural size instead of uh, the regular are, size. They are of uh, natural tropical size, so uh, probably a little bigger than what we're used to here in the Midwest. These glowing mushrooms, uh, how many of them look like they have bites taken out of them? Um, none. Do okay. any of them look like our lead singer? <laughs> no, no, they don't. Your lead singer, uh, although he might be a bright and shining personality, he is not this luminescent. Do we see our other front man anywhere? Uh, dead skeletons? You do not <laughs> see. You do not see any skeletons. No. That's a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to take some of these uh, mushrooms and then try and uh, smush them in my cloak and use the smushy mushroom juice on some of my arrows. Oh, can it make stuff glow, I wonder? Uh, your arrow tips are glowing. Good. I, I got an empty canteen. I might just squeeze some of it into one. Sure, go for it. Sounds like a good way to accidentally die. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, intentionally kill something. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. is my thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, Joe, are you done on the tree? Yeah, I think so. Uh, give I me. Might, uh, some give I might me. Treat my arrows and daggers too. Okay. Uh, Joe, give me another standard test on your climb down. All right. Fail. Okay, uh, you make it down the tree quite safely, uh, but along on the way down, you do see um, to the left of where you guys entered, along the the wall, along the uh, I guess the left wall we'll call it, uh, maybe twenty five percent in, you do see a stone archway. Interesting. Oh, okay, so there's one like behind us. Uh, there's one off to your left off from where you're entering. Off the trail. Off the trail. So this is the only other door that, for, that you see from here. From here. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll relay that to the group. I, I climbed up. I saw there's a clearing way down. Um, I don't see any other exits. There's also a bridge with some water underneath it. Uh, but it looks like there's a door over here off the trail a bit. So, 
don't know if we want to check out this door and see if there's anything through it and then if not keep going through or that's a trap i mean i hate bridges and i hate water and i like getting off the path check three boxes yeah. yeah sounds like this is perfect for you all right you guys want to go check this door out yeah yeah. Sure. You all cut through the path following Joe's instructions, and you find yourself at another uh, double door uh, set into the wall like the one you just came through. Uh, it would pull towards you, so you are on the hinge side of the door. Uh, immediately, one thing that you do notice on this door is that it's uh, the center, the crack where the two parts of the door is meet. Uh, you can see that it's been kind of cut down a little bit, carved down a little bit, probably you would take a guess to counteract the swelling caused by the humidity. Can we see through that? Is it like a gap we could look through? Uh, it's not large enough of a gap for you to look through. Okay. But maybe like they're can... touching, but it looks like someone's shaved it down. Yeah, sides absolutely. Door, so that it fits. Okay. Hmm. Well, good. That means we're going to get to kill some intelligent life. Seems likely. Uh, does that door open? Yes. Easily? Easily. All right, then. There's a little bit of squeak the from side. the hinges, but uh, the door opens without trouble. Okay. On the other side, you find yourself peering into what looks to be an orchard. Neatly cropped rows of trees, ripe with uh, bananas. Mm -hmm. um, all together you would take a quick estimate maybe 40 to 50 banana trees uh, each of them in full production with uh, green bananas hanging off of it in giant bunches mm -hmm. do we see uh, are there any like other bird sounds coming from in here not from in here okay um do we see anything underneath the trees, like any people or stuff milling about just these trees? No, you don't. Uh, if you really want to get some more information on what you see in here, you'll need to move in, and I'm going to make you roll a check. Sure. I'll do that. Two successes. Okay. Uh, you move in, and you do see that these trees have been... They're, they're well cultivated. They're well cared for. Um, there's no like dead uh, debris or foliage from the trees. Like when those long leaves fall, um, the paths between the trees are maintained. Um, you do see um, there's... Joe, go ahead and roll me another 2d6, but I want you to add the totals together. Oh, wait, that's not what I wanted to do. Three. You do see there are three trees where the bananas look very odd. Rather than being the long, you know, elongated bananas that we're all used to, they're small yellow orbs, maybe baseball to softball size. Hmm. All right. So this room right off the bat, there's been someone here recently, if they're maintaining these trees. That would be uh, a logical conclusion to come to. Do we see any other exits or entrances to this room? No. Are there any uh, any of the fruit on the ground? No. Any within arm's reach that we can pluck? Sure, yeah. If you want bananas, you got plenty of bananas. If you want to investigate... The weird yellow circle bananas, uh, you would have to climb a tree to, to get to those. Might be able to leverage some of our rope to uh, help climb a tree, perhaps. Um, now, I don't know a lot about banana trees, but I'm just going to presume they're a lot like palm trees in the fact that they're a single stalk without branches. Uh, if Could anyone be, knows know. better, you're fair to correct me. But being I from the don't. Midwest, I don't fucking know. They're, they're palms. They're, they're kind of like palms. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. That's what I'm looking. I'm just Googling by the way. I'm not okay. <laughs> We're right. going to call that the correct answer. Uh, so there would be no good rope 
thing to to toss it over and give yourself an anchor. Anybody uh, uh, have any skills of climbing trees? I am a bear, and bears are very good at climbing, especially black bears. Oh, I am shit. a black bear. You want to give it a shot? I'll let you... Uh, I think I will. I feel like with I that statement, I'll let you uh, climb this tree with advantage. Okay. I put my roll. Uh, okay, advantage. Here we go. Stop scratching your back on that tree and climb it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you're climbing... What tree are you climbing? Regular bananas or the weird round bananas? I'm going weird. <laughs> okay. Uh... Like I said, there was three of these trees. You pick one out, you climb it, and like I said, you get up there. Each banana, uh, banana, uh, yellow, round, like I said, baseball to softball size. Uh, the stem where it attaches to the the bunch, um, it almost looks like there's a metal ring attached to each one. So it looks like a ball with a little little stock on it with a metal ring off of the side of that stock. I can't tell if these are like tree ornaments or grenades. So um, kind of you should 50, get a lot of them and we can try one out. <laughs> right. There, uh, there's some metal coming out of these. Should I pick one? Many. Obviously. Pick many. Well, all right. I just I go ahead and I just pluck one. Okay. So start. You, I'll be down there to catch him as you chuck you, him down if you want. You pluck one grenade and you drop it down to Dan. <laughs> okay. Dan, what are you going to do with this banana? I'm going to see if he gives me more of them first. I'll keep dropping. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, we'll say um, off of this tree, you're able to get five of these weird round bananas. Mm -hmm. This one tree. All right. That's enough for one each. Yeah, and the the other two have an equal number. Uh, we'll we'll change that. This one has six, and the other two each have five. That means there's one extra for us to try it out. <laughs> Do the pins <laughs> stay on the tree when we pull them? No, that stays with the banana. Oh, okay. So there's like a metal pin. There's the a, a a ball with a little like stock, a little stem. And a okay. metal ring attached to the side of it. Oh, I mean, my character wouldn't know what to do so, with this. It's a problem. So there's like a stock. <laughs> so it's a grenade, and the stock's the lever and the pins in the stock. If that's what you want to go with, Joe, I'm not going to give anything away. I'm having flashbacks right. to like playing worms. Uh, like, <laughs> then the worms explode, and they burst into other bananas, and then they burst into Um what do they feel like? Do they actually feel like bananas? Or they no, they're like really something? firm and hard. Okay, almost like metal. Not quite like metal, but maybe like a banana skin wrapped around metal. Oh. <laughs> can I? Um. Okay, so huh. are the the pins are you can pull them out, right? Like we could potentially pull. Yes. Them out. I want to pull out a pin and throw it at one of the regular looking banana trees. Uh, you pull a pin out. You throw it at the regular banana tree. Uh, go ahead and give me a standard test. Did you remember that counting shall be three, <laughs> no more, no less? Really you, don't know how to count anyway. It doesn't matter. <laughs> your your weird banana hits this this tree, and it fucking explodes and just shatters the fucking oh, trunk of this right. tree, and the tree falls and collapses down across to one of the rows between the the lines of trees that's breakfast boys and I'm there we go fresh hot down. bananas I'm trying to get some bananas yeah so, okay. am i able to like peel the banana back on these grenades uh <laughs> no with the real questions here yes <laughs> you peel it back and you see a white um what looks like the coloring and texture of banana but it is hard as a stone hmm. Hmm. Does it still have the little stringy bits? Uh, yes, it's got some weird stringy bits in it, like you get for Perfect. a banana. Oh, it drives me nuts, those little bits. It's Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. If I had yeah. to bring it up, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go gather up some bananas. Been meaning to make up a new Hefeweizen. I think this will add a nice <laughs> little tone to it. There you go. Uh, essentially, we're going to call it bananas are infinite in this room. Regular bananas, so take as many as you fucking want. Holy hand grenades right. of banana. Banana grenades. Not. There are fifteen of them. 
I don't want to derail, but if they're infinite, we could collect all the bananas, go sell them <laughs> at one of our three restaurants <laughs> and make a fortune. I'm just saying. Screw the gold banana. <laughs> Who needs that? Check out. We got free <laughs> produce. Who needs a golden banana? <laughs> yeah. Um, so we, we have enough for each of us to have three of these banana grenades. Then. Yeah. Oh, I even made a card. Nice. Are we going to just say we get the bananas? You each get three. So if you advert your... Um, <laughs> nice. This is using the treasure cards from Tiny Dungeons. I photoshopped some of them to... Uh, good. Brilliant. Yeah. That's really good, man. Yep. That's wonderful. Hang on. I got a beer delivery coming in. Oh, no. I wish I had one of those. Uh, thanks, Ashley. I, I wish I had so, beer. With explosions and things like this, do you still... Joe just said he doesn't it? like you, Ashley. Yeah. Uh, he said yes. Also. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, so with uh, explosions and things, are you able to evade those, or how does how does that mechanic work? Like what throwing, if you're gonna pull throw. the pin and and martyr them? Um, <laughs> the it would work. The person who gets impacted would have the I would say everyone has in a, a chance to do a regular damage evade. Okay, so if you get caught in a grenade explosion, I'll let you make that evade check. Awesome. I knew right, it was coming. I thought that so badly. <laughs> oh god, the broom. Thanks, son. Did I misunderstand the evade skill? I thought the evade thing was like you choose it as an action on your turn. It's like right. almost like dodge and D. It is. It is. You know? Yes. Okay. You choose Normal. to evade, but okay. since Joe's a goblin, he gets free evades no matter what. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Goblins, yeah. anytime they're attacked, they get to evade for free. Yeah. Then I have. Uh, one That's of my awesome. traits makes my evade a 3d6 instead of a 2d6. Mm. Dang. And then another one of my traits from the martial arts lets me re-roll uh, all failed evade checks. That's amazing. Yeah, so Joe's just really fucking hard to hit. Yeah, I, in theory. <laughs> in theory. So <laughs> yes, if you're caught yet. in this explosion, <laughs> the way this would work is everyone who's kind of in that melee range, that close range... Yeah. We'll roll a 1d6 to see how many people get affected, and then I will roll randomly to determine who all is affected. So you will okay. get your target plus X number of additional targets. Uh, um, friendly fire is on. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say, hey dwarf, think fast. I'm gonna throw a banana at him, but it's gonna be one of the regular <laughs> bananas. <laughs> uh, oh, oh god. <laughs> They taught me how to play football wrong as a joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. You don't see any other exits to this room, though. So what's the plan? Um, uh, I guess we go back equipped with bananas and grenades. Okay. Yeah. You head back to the main room. Is there anyone that is good at like tracking or uh, not tracking, just perception? So I'd be curious to know who's been coming in here and maintaining these trees and if there's any traces of them. Uh, if you have an occupation that would hunting match that, uh, a trade, uh, what a trade that would kind of give you like hunting, tracking, anything? I'll let you roll. Uh, what is it? A standard or advantage? If not, you can roll a disadvantage. I right. had my family trade being a hunter. I uh, go ahead and roll just a standard check for me then. Okay, okay. That, that's partly why I packed up on perception and other things. So, but yeah, that's that's not good enough. No, you're not able to pick anything up. Uh, either. Kachow, no. Cannot. All right. I would help, but I'm too busy waiting on that bastard-ass bear to throw something else at me. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, I got to be ready at all times. Meanwhile, I'm hiding right behind him, and I have some of the mushrooms, and I'm writing kick me on his back. And he, just says, he has no idea. Because right. I'm stealthy. Absolutely. 
You know, just the other day I was saying he's one of the good ones, but I'm starting to doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> Something about him. You, you yeah. didn't watch last week, I don't think, then. <laughs> oh, uh, drugs, murder, literally everything. Yes, yeah. absolutely. That was the it entire was, session. I'm that was it. There. So, what's happening next, guys? Um, Does that mean we have to go across that damn bridge? I guess so. The only thing else we saw was that there's a bridge. Uh, I think as we're walking along the path, I want to be looking for more exits to the side now that so, I know that those are there. Okay. So, it, when you were up in the tree, you saw the... Climbing down, you saw this archway. You did see the the cave mouths for the stream and those were maybe you know eight to nine feet in diameter so those okay. could be potential ways to move Please. through uh but if you want to get a better feel for what happens on the latter half of this cave you just have to move further in i also want to take just like an armful of bananas with me absolutely like i said bananas are infinite so Within so reason, like, carry as stock of them. Yeah, within reason, carry as many as you fucking want. Gonna make me some banana splint mayo. Three, <laughs> that's right. Got it. Two bananas float. How many bananas can I carry? <laughs> I, I don't know, Dan. Make up something that sounds reasonable. I'm putting bananas. That's and I'm fantastic. just going to assume that I have as many as I need. Fantastic. Bananas float. All right. Okay. Um, Put that so. in the box for later. <laughs> so, uh, did you guys say you were going to this bridge? Well, right. I yeah. think we're gonna we're gonna look for other side passages first. Yeah, I think we're slowly well, going we're, there. Yeah, but looking. As we're walking along. Yeah. I'm gonna be okay. looking left or right. Now that right. I'm aware there's side passages. With your awareness of what a side passage might look at, you make it clear to the bridge without finding any others. Oh okay. man! So you come up to this bridge. It's a uh, cobblestone stone bridge. It's got uh, wooden rails along the side of it. It looks quite uh, rustic and homey, uh, almost charming, as one might say. It does have a very high arch to it. Um, this stream, you would take a hazard that it's maybe two to three feet deep at its very deepest. Uh, but this yep. bridge almost puts you, I don't know, eight feet up or so, Uh into the air if you were to walk across it. Um, like I said, looking left and right, you can follow this stream as it flows from right to left. And you see it comes out of a cave mouth on the right and then enters a cave mouth on the left. Each of those yeah. are large enough uh, that you could enter. So passage, I, I don't know. All right. Uh, I want to take one of the bananas and go over to one of the trees that's glowing and just cover it in glowy... Okay, you you cast banana. mushroom light on the banana, right? And then I drop it in the stream and want to watch it as it goes mm -hmm. down and see if it veers off or. Uh, you drop the banana in the stream, uh, and you watch it as it floats down the center and eventually disappears into the cave mouth on the left. Okay, does it? As I'm watching it, like go through the cave, does it seem like it? twists or in any way or does it just kind of go out of sight it just kind of goes out of sight okay mm. there's one thing my father taught me never trust a charming bridge this is going to be our doom <laughs> uh, charming bridges deep though right the water is only two or three feet deep okay is the bridge is abnormally right? high i want to the bridge is abnormally high the left hand <laughs> side that it uh that's going out and listen and see if I can hear like a waterfall or anything. So you want to go follow off the trail along the, yeah. the stream and then listen. Yeah. Um, you do not hear any kind of waterfall. Okay. Are you going to the inlet or, or to the, the out, the, the out. out. Yeah. yeah. What are the rest of you doing? Waiting for someone to jump out of the water and eat him. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. that's fair. Nothing. I'm throw a grenade at both of them. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever nothing happens. jumps out of the water to eat him. I was waiting to throw a grenade, but okay. You and me both. Uh, I'm gonna go into the water. Uh, I'm gonna start trucking across the water. It's two or three feet deep. I'm a yeah, bear. Yeah, absolutely. I don't care. 
Uh, and I, I want to be kind of close to the bridge so I can look up underneath it and just kind of spot around. As soon as you move into the water and you direct your eyes underneath the bridge, you see a rather large troll kind of hugging the wall of the bridge, I trying to hide. I knew it. As soon, now. as soon as he realizes that the jig is up, he's going to make us pay the troll toll. Initiative. You can see fight is in his eyes. Uh, so someone who remembers the rules, how does initiative work? It's 2d6. Uh, it 2d6, add them together. I get advantage for vigilant. Sounds great. Seven. All right, Jeff. That's odd. What is that? Uh, That's uh, eight. Eight. Yeah. I hit the initiative button and it seems very confused. Uh, Jake, you got a seven. It does like a like a tiebreaker thing. It adds like a yeah. decimal. Yeah. So uh, basically, we wrote a seven. Who is for Barty? For Booty? That's me. For Bounty. For Bounty, you got a seven as well. Uh, yeah. You and two both got a seven. Uh, Jake and Jeremy, can you both roll again for me? Oh, I'm short and slow. I'm going. Okay. I'm. I'm I. I concede. Okay. All right. Who am I missing here? I think it's me. My initiative roller is not working, so I might just do a test. Just roll two d six. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, nice. Eleven. That's Ooh, a look at the roll reflex right reflex there. The uh, Joe, did you roll? <laughs> Don't worry, I won't roll like that again for the rest of the night. Yeah, I got seven. You got seven as well. Uh, Joe, go ahead and roll again for me. Six. All right, so. Doing some math adjustments. Carry the one. Uh huh. Carry the two. So uh, it's going to be and math. Jeff, Jake, Joe. No, I'm sorry. That's Dan incorrect. Dan should be first. Dan is absolutely yeah. first. Dan, sir. So Dan's no first, then Jeff. Then Jake. I go by either. Then <laughs> Joe. That Fuck. guy usually works also. The uh, <laughs> the fucking yeah. troll is in last place. Dan, it's your turn as uh, Rody. The Rody bears. I go fang. by both. Yeah. The Rody, just Rody. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Rody. Bears, bears okay his too. teeth. Yeah, bears his teeth. Flashes claws and you can tell there's a fight happening under this bridge uh can i move into a position to see sure and then uh you have to tell me if i'm doing something stupid here um am i able to use marksman what does marksman do um odds of hitting your target dramatically increase for using the focus action your next attack so does that mean my attack attack or attack so, action takes with place this on the game, next turn. Uh, with this game, you have two actions per turn. Okay, so if I do Things marksmanship, can, my right. attack will be next. Right. So yeah, if you use your marksmanship at your next turn, you can take that shot for the whatever the marksmanship benefit is. Okay, I'll, I'll not do that then. So I'll just yeah do my regular roll with advantage. Oh shit! Jesus. Wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> um. I'll tell you what, we're going to play with some modified critical success and fail rules. Uh, if you roll all successes on all of your possible dice, uh, except for if you're rolling at disadvantage, you get an extra point of damage. Uh, if you yeah. roll all fails, uh, all ones, we'll say, except for if you're rolling at disadvantage, something bad happens. So, so it's more likely to get a quick success yes when you're rolling without advantage no disadvantage you don't get critical success or critical failure i think the question is no, I mean, test because if you do like a standard joe, test it's two joe don't math me <laughs> dan you deal mm -hmm. two damage to this fucking troll all right i hope that's a lot it's uh one more, more, than more than what's standard <laughs> yeah all right so but, i mean is it a lot for the trolls question that's a question you don't know or an answer you don't know. Uh, Jeff, you're up. What's uh, do the roadie to, doing? 
Uh, how uh, how close did you say I am? Uh, well, one movement. Okay, I'll move up to him, and I'll do what the roadie does best. Yeah, and I will talk to him about pyrotechnics for like the rest of my turn. Uh, I'm gonna attack <laughs> with my claws. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You're gonna light his ass up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, That's but shame. you. Nope. I'm gonna tickle him. I'm gonna tickle him on his bum. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> on his bum. If you gotta tickle someone, come hey, on down, I mean, troll. Might as well make it count. Uh, Jake, you're up. Uh, I'm gonna try to. I'll I'll approach, uh, and I will prepare a glowing arrow. I'll load a glowing arrow into my bow. Nice. Okay gonna give them the sickness uh, listen, i assume uh first round of combat i'll say that you you get a free load at the start of combat so like i've been traveling around with it not yeah in yeah the, yeah okay in that case i'll shoot a, a glowing arrow at the guy okay roll your attack you know right. now that i'm working on my second with a coconut in this it's it's really good okay i was a little thrown off by that coconut but now that it's got a Time to mellow out. Like, all right, that's fucking tasty. Might be better when it's a little warm, perhaps. Not a fan of coconut yeah. stuff. Uh, like Jake, coconut. you sink a glowing arrow. Um, it deals one point of damage. Uh, if that glowing fungi, algae uh, cover you applied did anything extra, it is not immediately obvious. It's going to turn right. him into a crazy beast. Uh, yeah, he just goes even crazier. Joe, you're up next. All right. Um, I think I was pretty far away because I was right over Yeah, there, you right. absolutely were. So you are, no, move. we'll say, at the least three three movements away from this troll. So Okay. I'll we'll spend my two running up. Okay, cool. Uh, Jeremy. Well, I suppose I'll waddle in into the imminent doom I was fully aware of. And I'm going to try and <laughs> cut his nuts off. Absolutely. As you do. As you do. Roll as that attack. Do. All right. If you're rolling with your mastered weapon, of course, that's it with ad, uh, advantage. Oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I'm well trained in the cutting of, nu- of troll nuts. You <laughs> successfully cut this troll's nuts for one point of damage. It's a grazer, but he'll feel it. He'll feel it. He's <laughs> he's regretting all sorts of things right now. Uh, but now it is the troll's turn. Uh, you do see that the troll, uh, some of those wounds that you've uh, inflicted on him, uh, you can see they start to close up. Oh, mm. man. Um, let's see. Um, Rody and Jeremy, I don't remember your character's name, but Jeff and Jeremy, you two were in melee range. Um, to be fair, I grazed his nuts. I, you did raise his nuts. It. Yeah. I tickled his bum. You did tickle the bum. I don't know yeah. what we're he doing with like trolls. That, feels kind of awkward. Yeah. <laughs> he. The question is, does he like it? He has a large, wet river stone in his hand. And he just comes up and he tries to club you over the head with his Sounds stone. like he doesn't like it. He was not a fan. Uh, that is a success. So he inflicts one point of damage on you. On who? Which one was it? Uh, on Jeremy. I will uh, go ahead and use my defender trait, and I'll uh, I can have that attack hit me instead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, you no. bastard! Oh God! Yeah. Uh, no, hit me! <laughs> no, hit me! <laughs> That's great. Uh, all right. So he deals his damage to you uh, with his first attack. Since he's not moving, he's going to use his second oh, action man. to swing again. Uh, this time he is going to be aiming for, uh, Jeff. That is another success. So he does put a, another point of damage on you. I'll use my defender trait to pick the dwarf up and use him to block the attack. (laughs) (laughs) I defend you, you defend me. (laughs) All right. Uh, with that, the troll's turn is complete. Turn passes up to Dan. All right. Well, uh, this time, since I don't have any need to move, I will use Markmanship All right. and then attack again. And I have a quick shot that lets me uh, reload and fire at the same action. Absolutely. So are you just popping off two rounds? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and they both, all of them hit because I Markmanshipped. 
Oh, is that they hit on a three plus? That's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, that deals two points of damage. Damn. Uh, roll your second attack. Uh, do I mark, I mark for the ship takes an action and the attack takes an action, right? Uh, I don't think. Does marksmanship say say it takes an action? Oh, I don't know. I don't know how your character works. I think you're spending an action it's, to get the benefit. That's what I thought. Focus okay. action. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it is a focus action. Yeah, then focus yes. Is yeah. a, is a yes. Action. Okay. Then absolutely. That would be the end of your turn. Passing us along to Jeff, the roadie. Uh, okay. So, uh, I'm just going to swing at him twice. I think. Absolutely. I'm not too, I'm not too bright. I, I, I'm banking on one big boom. <laughs> Uh, there's the furt man. I'm just man, you it. fucking whiff it wow. on both I, of your attacks. Uh, you're going swiping at butterflies. Is what I'm doing. <laughs> they pass gas right at you, and you're just like, Ooh. ah. Uh, at least I'm not threatening. You can attack the other one now. <laughs> there you go, uh, Jake. You're up. Um, I think I'll. Hmm, I'll try and get up beside him, and then I'll come at him with a dagger attack. Okay, you move up next to him. Yeah. And go ahead and make your attack. Uh, yeah, that works. That'll do. Uh, yeah, you sink your dagger in for one damage. The troll is still up. Uh, and that would be your turn, correct? Mm-hmm. Next is Joe. You're muted. <laughs> right. Uh, it's I'm us. Still, still one movement away, so I'm going to continue running up to him. And then with my other action, I'll do an attack. Okay. Flash out some punches and a miss. And you miss. And that's my turn. <laughs> All right, Jeremy. Well, part of me wants to do the smart thing and think about who had a, who had a torch. But then again, part of me is just kind of pissed off that he stole my fair and square hit from earlier. <laughs> so I'm going to inflict some more bloody violence because I want him to attack me. There you go. I thought you were going to attack me. I'm like, okay. All right. All right. I did consider it. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid bone throwing bear. And then with his defender trait, he'd redirect it to you as an ally. <laughs> oh. All right. Why are you attacking yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? So your first attack is a definite whiff. Uh, second attack is a hit for one Wouldn't damage. Be not, if I may. Uh, yes, I'm you. Grazer. The first time you graze the right, this time you graze I the go, left. Whoa. And then I swing up and I graze him again. Yeah. You're making sure uh, both of them are shaved nice and close. Yeah. That's right. You're going to get a funny scar thanks to me. I don't care if you heal that or not. <laughs> uh, after that, it passes to the troll's turn. Uh, he does, you see the, some wounds start healing up, uh, and Jeremy, you're going for his nuts. He's attacking you. I do what I do for a reason. His uh, precious regenerating family jewels. Yeah, his first attack <laughs> is a solid miss. I would like to use my opportunist ability then. Oh, yeah. After he misses me. Absolutely. Go ahead and roll that attack. Nice. Because I'm a mean bastard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you hit. You he hit. misses. I turn around and I give him another grazer. That's it. You fucking, <laughs> you're back on the right nut. He's got to be give clean a little nick. Uh, He does swing back at you after that, and it does connect for one point of damage. All right. All right. Uh, Dan. Uh, I, I feel bad for saying it, but I'm going to stick with what's working. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll mark spin up again, and maybe I'm going to shoot at his other nut here. Okay. Uh, yeah, you <laughs> sink your arrow. I feel like it's effective. Yeah, directly into this troll's uh, left testicle. Uh, and it pierces through and bites deep into his thigh, nicks the artery that runs through the f uh, thigh, starts spraying blood all over the place, Quentin and he Tarantino collapses. Style. Quentin Tarantino style. And he collapses into the stream. All right, I believe it's time to... Uh feed him a banana grenade and I was just going to say that send him on his way <laughs> put him in the stream Pull put him, him in the in. stream off he goes well, well next in initiative would be Jeff 
Uh, I will go ahead and do as uh, as Dan suggests. I will take my banana grenade and I will uh, I will shove it in his mouth. Yeah. And I will pull out the pin. Yeah. And let him let the water just take him. <laughs> Absolutely. He gets maybe a couple dozen feet down the stream <laughs> and just is, sir. There it is. Boom, <laughs> as it just pops. Uh, all of you who are there within range get splattered with uh, some troll gray matter. Um, as you, there shouldn't be too much of that. So. No, there wasn't a whole lot. Um, as I'm you, curious, so yeah, I'm just gonna taste it really quick. I'm a bear. <laughs> just curious. Uh, it curious. is uh, abnormally sweet. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that so? I think Maybe my Hefeweizen is going to get an extra kick. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> banana troll brain booze. That's oh, it right man. there. Uh, so. Uh, brain <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, we'll give you all my brain if you want to put it in your canteen for later. The oh, troll is yep. slain. What's next? Uh, I'm feeling pretty good about things so far. You know, uh, continue on past the bridge on the trail. Do you want to explore the mouths of either end of this stream? I want to check out the uh, the clearing after the bridge and then come back to the mouths if there's nothing there. Okay. Uh, that sounds fair. Who's all going along with Joe's character to check out this clearing? Might as well. I mean, yes. it gets me out of the water, and I do hate water. It does. It does. Yes. So you all uh, get past the stream, you head down, I don't know, 50-ish feet, and it comes to this circular clearing, uh, maybe 20 to 30 feet in diameter, um, and there's a single uh, black stone setting in the dead center of this circular clearing. Hmm. Oh, cool. Um I want to walk up to it. Does it have any like engravings or anything on it? Uh, is anyone else going up with Joe to check out this black stone? I might keep a little distance, but yeah, I'm not, I'm staying away from the. I'll go up there, confused, <laughs> thinking that it is also a black bear. They, Hello, mother, <laughs> is that you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jeremy, uh, it's baseball sized. <laughs> Oh, you've lost some weight over the years. I see. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, Jeremy, what are you doing? <laughs> that keto I kind of diet. Agree. I'm going to let the gobble have a little bit of room for what he's doing. Okay. Uh, so the the bear and the goblin go up to check out this stone. Why don't okay. each of you give me a uh, save? Oh, no. A standard check. A fail. Yeah. Oh. Surprisingly, uh, immediately as the your goblin friend Kachow reaches down to touch the stone, uh, Rody, uh, you see small streamers in the dirt around it start whipping up immediately, and you dive back as this net erupts up out of the dirt and then hoists him straight up into the air. He's setting maybe 10 feet up. Uh, dangling in this fucking net. Ow! Well, I'm sure something's coming. Let's see if we can get him down. Yeah. Does the stone come up with me? Yeah, it was just a a regular stone that was painted uh, painted. Can we black. track the rope? Like, the, okay. yeah, it up higher. Does it connect to anything? Was it anchored uh, to? Yeah, it is anchored down to a uh, a young kind of sapling of a tree that was bent over. He obviously triggered some kind of uh, uh, release that uh, snapped that sapling up, which pulled the net straight up. So just a standard kind of trap. So gobbles always land on their feet, right? You're okay if we just chop this right now. Uh, I'd prefer I got him. To... I got him. Sure. All hey, right. I don't got him. Oh. <laughs> Trust fall. <all. laughs> <laughs> even if you're uh, not a real bastard. Yeah, even if you're not <laughs> caught by the bear, you bounce <laughs> off the bear, which uh <laughs> is enough to to break your fall to not deal any damage. Okay. Uh that Joe, works. I want you to give me a test at disadvantage. Five. Oh. Ooh. On your brief stint in the net, 
you do see on the wall to the right, uh, off the trail, you do see another stoned archway. Uh, you saw it right before it was cut and you fell. Okay. Nice. So along the wall on the right, like if we came over the bridge, went to the center of the clearing and then to the right. Yep. A... Yep. Okay. Um, all right. I'm going to point that out to the rest of the party. Say, hey, there's another doorway over there. Let's um, get to it then. Hey, is that black stone? Uh, did that fall down too? Uh, yeah, it would have fallen with him. Can I pick it up? Absolutely. Okay. Even if it's nothing, I'm just going to frequently pull it out and refer to it as my mother. <laughs> <laughs> That's I've beautiful. Been going, I've been going to therapy. This is a way of me processing there you go. my gifts. There you go. <laughs> you know, you, you really do have her eyes. Mm. That, thank you. Uh, They're cold that. and black and heartless. Exactly. Just like my mother. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Absolutely. Um, so you all head off the, uh, the, out of this clearing off the trail towards the right. And you come across a, another archway with a double door. Unlike the last one, which was kind of maintained for ease of access. Uh, this one has not been. It looks like it might be swollen shut like the first door. All right. We know how to get through um, this. Sure. Like This looks like another door that you're... Uh, Bear? <laughs> Here we go. Brody? All right. Gonna Give me your you test. Right. You and your mother? Just straight up test? Yeah, just normal. straight up test. Ugh, you bounce off the door uh, rather disappointed in yourself. Afraid of harming his mother, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, tell you what, how about I, uh, I try to weaken it up a little bit with a few swings? It will give you another go. Uh, I got it. All right. Uh, Jeremy, if you're going out with your axe, give me your test for your axe. I'll do that. Ah, you, this you. door is impenetrable. <laughs> we have found the final boss. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm going to try just opening it. Is it still stuck? <laughs> <laughs> that would be the best. <laughs> I did that once to my players. Give oh, me a standard God. test, Joe. Okay. Uh -huh. They were trapped in a corridor with a closing, closing wall. <laughs> it it opens up fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, all right. It's beautiful. Uh, it's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> Looking inside, uh, this is it's different. A pole door. Yeah, it's a pole door. Yeah. <laughs> Looking uh, inside, Joe. This is. I, I don't read, so I didn't even see the sun. Yeah. <laughs> Immediately, uh, you see a domed room. Oh, hey. Uh, hey, Melissa. There you go. I knew I recognized the name. Uh, and I was trying to pronounce it, but Jeff, you saved us. Yeah. Do door uh, must remain unlocked during business hours. You it's open the door and you see a, a domed room, maybe 20 feet tall at the top, just completely domed down to the floor. So like it's a, it's half a circle you're walking into in the center of this room is a pedestal, a stone pedestal, uh, with some supports coming off the top of it to, uh, kind of balance out this giant four foot long golden banana that rests on the top. Sweet. I think we found our banana boys. Um, you were right. That trusted. door was the final <laughs> boss. <laughs> so I've just like walked through the doorway here. Yeah. Right? I'm standing on the edge of the room. Yeah. It's the middle. Is there anything suspended above it? No. Uh, above uh, it, you do see in the very, the peak of the dome, uh, you do see a steel grate, uh, maybe, maybe a foot, uh, in diameter, uh, just a steel grate at the very top. Hmm. Ah, and, and nothing, nothing else. Uh, not from Joe's vantage point. Is it like stone? Yeah. The, the dome? Okay. Yeah. Uh, what does the ground look like? Stone. Stone as well. No, no drains or anything. Uh, you do see a drain at the foot of the pedestal for the banana. I feel oh, like geez. this room <laughs> is going to fill from the top hmm. when we get that there banana. Yeah. How how far is it from the edge of the door 
to the uh side. what did i say it was like a 20 foot dome so it's like 10 feet can i can i make sure the door is like ripped off its hinges so it doesn't like accidentally absolutely uh go ahead and roll us. me a check All just right. a standard check uh you're a bear give me advantage on this i am a bear sometimes i forget you uh <laughs> you spend some time and you just fucking rip these fucking doors right off their hinges mm, we're not gonna drown i feel like it's worth being thorough is there like a secondary door that we don't see was, that's gonna I like just gonna check for that. uh you need to uh are you familiar with engineering sure am not just perceptive uh give me a disadvantage on that then uh, i want to do a check with that as well oh i had marksmanship yeah. on sorry uh, roll that no, again without I'm marksmanship. professional drunk i'm used to seeing double <laughs> <laughs> give me a standard check with that then <laughs> uh joe and dan you don't see uh jeremy you don't see any double doors there any any hidden doors Dang. any uh pocket doors or anything like that then we're safe surely uh, yes <laughs> so i have uh utmost so there's a, a right at the bottom underneath yeah off to the yeah. side of the uh the pedestal the side of the pedestal yeah uh, i want to walk over to that grate and look down it and see what i see just darkness i want to feed a banana through the grate the the slats in the grate are too small to feed a full banana through all right i do have one banana through the. you <laughs> waffle stomp that fucking banana, banana. banana on the grate <laughs> try to open it up you can do that if you want idea. to <laughs> does the grate seem like it fastened in the ground yeah right absolutely okay. uh so who all has moved into this room uh, i got a, a real quick question is the golden banana resting on the pedestal or is it like suspended above it it's resting on the pedestal what if we all just uh tied some rope around the banana and just gave it a real good yank <laughs> and then we just run right yeah. the hell back through this yeah. It's only 10 feet from the door, right? So. Yeah. That way, if a crazy trap door happens still, we're not in there. True. I don't see how that could go wrong in any way. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not touch the banana if, <laughs> if that's fine. Yeah, I'm afraid whatever crazy trap is going to go off just when we touch it with getting the rope around the banana. So. If that's your plan, who's going to go in there and tie the rope around the banana? So, so bef before that, some yeah, more investigating first. So yeah, before before we do that, I'm probably not the one to do this, uh, but uh, maybe somebody else can. Could can anybody take an assessment of this banana at a distance? Is this the banana we're looking for, or is this like four are we foot in the wrong long, castle? solid golden banana? If I had a nickel for every four foot long solid banana gold thingy. <laughs> All right, you'd have a nickel. That's what she said. <laughs> That's what she said. I don't think I'd have much. Yeah, I'd, I'd blow it on booze. Yeah, um, I have a lot of money because I had a four foot <laughs> solid gold. <laughs> yeah. A lot of money and five cents. Yeah, uh, I'll do a perimeter sweep. Like I'll cut, I'll go around the edge of the dome and look for anything, okay. anything that stands out. Let's get back to that feedback but first let's go ahead and take us a little break okay so sure. everyone who's watching give us like two to five minutes and we'll be right back cool and then when we come back we'll figure out what the roadie sees as he does a perimeter sweep around this domed room Dead. that's that's <laughs> it uh so don't fucking go anywhere we'll be right back
Shenanigans. Here we are back from our little break. Uh, so, uh, the roadie, uh, Jeff, you go into this room and you take a tour of the exterior of the room. A tour. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> there a is three hour tour. <laughs> one, one thing that you see in this room, uh, other than what you already know, you already know that there's the the grate in the ceiling. You already see the pedestal with the giant golden banana resting on it. You see the grate in the floor, but on the wall, uh, just maybe a couple of feet to the right from the door, uh, you see, um, it's, it's odd. I'm going to try and just explain it to you. Imagine like the old, like digital displays where you see like the eight configuration where there's the, the lines vertically and horizontally mm-hmm. that makes the eight. Um, All me, the possible number combinations are, are in it. Let me. It's a, an old digital clock. Like an old digital clock. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm drawing on the, uh, the roll 20 to try and better. It, it, it's, it's four bars with a bottom and top line shared. Right. So yes, you see that shape on the wall but underneath of it you see the words carved in the wall do not push but (laughs) but the word not (laughs) the word not has been scratched out so you so the the figure the eight character you would see on like old digital clocks with the words do not push inscribed like carved into the uh, the wall underneath like neatly precisely like a mason and inscribed the words do not push and then later on someone came and scratched out carved out the words very crudely carved out the word not but you can still tell that it said not behind them trying to scratch it out I'll call other people over and I will begin waxing philosophically. Why? Well, um, I don't understand why you, you make a button thing only to tell us not to push it. I mean, that's just, that just seems fundamentally wrong. I don't understand. I know. It. It's a button, button has to be pushed. Be so, what it is. And then I'll when, when Jeff says, come check this out, who checks it out? I'll come check it out. Absolutely. Jeremy and Dan. Um, I mean, yeah, especially once I hear him wax philosophic. Dan. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I feel like we all got to come here and stare at this. As the great bard Salt and Pepper once said, "You do need to push it." <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that is the fucking highlight <laughs> of the goddamn night. <laughs> and so I will. You push the uh, button. Yeah. As soon as you We're push it, sorry, you just can't, you a can't secondary it door I will over the it. entrance immediately ah, slams down. We all knew it. <laughs> Water starts pouring in from the grate on the top, slowly <laughs> filling the room as Pushing that in. digital <laughs> clock above the words do not push starts counting down. Nine, eight, seven. I'm going to throw a banana bomb at the door before it's fully closed. Uh, you're going to have to give me a reflex, a save at disadvantage to try and but pop. if I was resolute and I had advantage on all saves. All right. Oh. Then you fucking make that save with advantage. Uh, do good. Well, oh. the thing is. You toss your <laughs> grenade. You taught me to play ball wrong as a joke. Yeah, uh, you. Play ball wrong as a yeah. joke. Oh, you toss your grenade known. past you the door, it. and you hear it boom as it explodes on the other side of the door, doing nothing for you. As the uh, the, the, the the wall clock counts down. It was a worthwhile effort. What happens if I hit the button again? Nine. All Eight, right. seven. We're already screwed if we let button. it go. Nine. Stop. Wait, we have infinite Stop. bananas. Stop. Eight. Leave the button down with the bananas. Seven. So every time the button's button. push, it resets. Is that what it you're, resets you're to nine. Let's see what happens I when it gets to button. zero. Or that. You hold the button. Yeah. It stays on nine. 
Let's let's see what so happens like when nine, it, I assume nine. the room is filling. Nine. 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 Is the room, room filling? still filling? The room is still happens? filling with water. I'm gonna I'm gonna let go and see what happens if it's zero. Nine. Yeah. We've got no choice. Eight as the water's getting up to your knees. Seven. Can I see where the water is draining out? It's not draining. It's not. Can I start drinking Six. the water? Absolutely. <laughs> it's cool and it's fresh and it's okay. crisp. Six. Good water. Uh, I'm gonna see if my bananas float real well or not. Uh, your bananas use... your bananas float. The water's up to your thighs. And I use them as a flotation device Six. in an emergency. Didn't one of you see a grate earlier or something? On the floor, yeah. yeah. It's by the pedestal. Is it does it look like it's been like sealed off or something now? Uh you don't know. It's underwater by this point. Five. I'm gonna put my arms out. Just let it happen, guys. Four. I'll stick Find my head under center. the water and start killing around. You know what? Great. If I'm gonna drown, I'm gonna drown with a goddamn golden banana in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Do you go There's pick up the banana? Right Three. I'll go help them get splash, that banana. Splash, splash. As you guys take the banana. Two. Let's make for the door. One. Battery ram. <laughs> Zero. The door slides open. Water no. spills out. Do, do the two of us go charging through it as we attempt to batter it down? The door opens on its own. That's what I mean. You're free. As we look like idiots as we run through it. Yeah, you you look like idiots as you run through the door with your golden banana. Perfect. I'd say we look like a right proper pair. That's Here we go. Right. <laughs> Brave. Yes. I'd say more like a banana. So, I'll take it. as opposed to a, a pear. You <laughs> now have. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you. You yeah. now have the golden banana. Does the pedestal do anything when we pull the banana off of it? Nope. <laughs> Let's make our way downtown. Let's walk fast. Let's get home now. <laughs> So yeah, I guess that's the question. Dan suggesting escape. What are the rest of your thoughts? Escape. Yeah. We do have the banana. Uh, yeah. We, was there anything else that we were told was in this? Um... That you were told? No, you just told it was the tomb of the golden banana. That's all you know. Uh, the only things that you would know of that you haven't explored yet are the the two caves. Mm-hmm. This was the only. This was the only room that was connected to that clearing uh, yeah, area, right? right? Yeah, it's the only other one that we're aware of. Yeah, mm. um, I'm gonna bite the banana. Uh, it is <laughs> solid gold, uh, so it's got a. You leave a, little, a few little teeth marks. Perfect proof of ownership. <laughs> it's. <laughs> It's not a copper banana with a fake gold outline. Right, sure. right. This is <laughs> legit the, gold. <laughs> I'm going to peel the sticker off the banana. Uh, you peel the dull sticker off of that banana. Yeah. I will say awesome. this banana is heavy enough to transport it. It is always going to take the minimum of two people. Oh, good thing we both got a hold of it then. Yes. I'm you pretty lucked sure up it there. weighs more than me, so I'm not gonna be too good at that absolutely not <laughs> you can hold the middle you can be that guy who's me when they're moving right. a couch and it looks like they're helping but isn't they're not mm -hmm. so what's happening guys um do we want to just head out or do we want to investigate these other two waterways the roadie, water. the roadie cares not for riches so uh Let just, just leave with adventure. my giant golden bananas just adventure <laughs> All right. Uh, I am kind of curious needs. to keep looking. I want to wade through the water on the, the side. Yeah, upstream. Okay. So the side that it pours out from the wall. I want to see where that water is coming from. So you want? are you wanting to look at the source of the water or the exit of the water? Source. Uh, I see where the water is coming from. You kind of peer into, there's the cave opening. Uh, you can see into this cave once your eyes adjust a little bit. Uh, it is a, it goes a little ways in Then there's just a, a small domed cave opening with a, uh, pond with a spring in the center of it. And that's, what's feeding this little stream. Ah, so oh. it's a little self-contained source. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything noteworthy that I see in that pond? Not from there. No. I want to go see 
if there's anything noteworthy in that pond. Uh, you move up to the pond. Let's come back to you, Joe. What is everyone else doing while the goblin ventures off up the stream? I'm following uh, the goblin again. Following the I goblin? Think, if we've got the banana, I guess we'll wait, probably, unless you want to go in with him. Uh, since, um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with the two who have the banana. I mean, I hate water, and I'd hate being in water carrying this heavy-ass banana even more. I think I'm going to look out for whoever the gardeners are, or whatever you call the bastards that have been okay. setting all these traps. So three of you wait on the trail while the goblin and the bear go check out this pond. Uh, as you move up to the edge of the pond, you do see the glitter, the glint of copper silver and gold coins in the bottom of this pond where the springs coming up out of hmm. our portable wealth i'm gonna rummage in my pouch get like a, a coin i'm gonna flick it into the water absolutely i'm gonna make a wish yeah yeah mm. i hope uh i hope pa's out there and I hope you're doing better than Ma. I'm going to hold up the rock. And <laughs> <laughs> Nothing even remotely constructed. Just <laughs> I'll tell you what. Uh, fate shine upon you. Between now and the end of the session, you can grant yourself advantage on one check. Oh, okay. Hmm. Joe? I was looking out for you. Um, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to toss in just a... Random coin I you have. toss in a coin, you give a little prayer, you get a little wish. Same thing. You get the same trait or the same bonus. Now Sweet. to the end of the session, you can give yourself advantage on one test of your choice. Fantastic. And then I want to start filling my bag with all the coins that aren't the one I threw in. Even mine? <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm standing right there. That's, that's, that's pause <laughs> coin. This changes everything, Joe. Oh, shit. As you, you move use in, that advantage right now? <laughs> as you move into this pool to start collecting coins, the algae uh, along the stones at the bottom of it coalesce into a single form, an amoeba of sorts, and you feel it wrap around your ankle and it starts to burn and sizzle. Uh, this is going to be initiative between Joe, Jeff, and whatever this is, unless you two want to use your turn to call out for the others to come back you up. So, uh, uh, how many movement actions? Because he's in the blonde. I mean, how many movement actions for me to get back to that golden banana? Three. Okay. So, uh, Jeff, you got a ten. what is that? Ten? No. Yeah, ten. No, ten. eleven. That's. 11. Yeah, you're right. And Joe, what did you get? Uh, for initiative. 10. All right. Very good. Jeff, you're up first. Uh, I will go ahead and first action shout. Uh, Gollum's got himself in a bit of a pickle. <laughs> All right. And he shouts it loud enough that the other three of you can hear it. Uh, shouting is a free action. I want you other three to go and roll initiative for me then. All right. I uh, could call him Gollum. <laughs> Goblin <laughs> is in trouble. Goblin is in trouble. I always knew nothing good came out of water. <laughs> uh, Jake, you got a 10. What about fish? And, um, Dan, what cooked. did you get? That's all I got. I hope I'm like elf one and the other one's elf two. Dan, what did you get? Oh, uh, let, let's see if the buttons. No. Nope. All right. I'm familiar with fish. It's, with my uh, 2d6, right? 2d6. Two two six. Six. Yeah. yeah do a test again. Seven. Seven. Some scallops. A little bit of butter. Delicious. <laughs> All right, uh, so Jeff, you shout for the others. Uh, it is still your turn. You still have both of your actions. Lemon. What are okay. you doing? So this amoeba thing, is it an actual entity, like like a thing I can hit, or is it more like 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 a trap or like where it's like, like it's it looks like a thing you could hit? Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. Those are my favorite things. Uh, does it look like it's in enveloping 
uh, the goblin? Yeah, it's trying to, yeah. Okay. Uh, could I uh, rip him out of the uh, the bull? Absolutely. You're going to give me a uh, an athletics kind of test. Seeing huh? as you're a giant fucking bear, I'm going to go yeah. and give you advantage on it. Oh, thank you, sir. Just give him right in there and give him a scoop. You could just like one hand. Joink. <laughs> you got it. You reach in and you grab the goblin by the back of his shirt. You just... Huah! And you just fucking jerk him right out of that god. That's the wrong phrasing. Right out of that goddamn <laughs> pawn <laughs> to uh, safety. Okay, and then I will say, "All right, little buddy, let's go." And I'm gonna start. Uh, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move away. Uh, cool. Yeah. Action to get him out of the water, and action to move away. Uh, Joe, you're actually number two in this. Convenient. Okay. So this involves me immediately stepping into the pool? Uh, as soon as you started, started grabbing the coins. Okay. So we got some. You got none. When you <laughs> grab that first coin, when it's attached. Yes, you got one coin. Joe, roll me a d6. One, two, it's copper. Three, four, it's silver. Five, six, it was gold. Make it count, Joe. I'm pulling one for you. One d6. If it's a ah, you, got, yeah. you grabbed a nice. single gold coin. Hell yeah. Hey, I'm on your team here. There you go. So, uh, Joe, you've been yoinked out of the fucking uh, the water. You're now on the shore. The bear's saying, let's go. The bear's going. What are you doing? I'm going to tell the rest of the party, uh, there's a greedy plant monster thing in there. Harden some coins. If we want to kill it, we might get some money. If not, we can leave. Uh, I'll say right now the threat is immediately gone. Right. How did the rest of you respond to that statement? We already got a giant fucking golden banana. <laughs> now I say that that gold coin is going to be the only thing that gets out of here, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, do the rest of you want to move in to engage this slime algae monster, or do you want to continue on your quest? Eh. eh. I'll you look cool. like I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go fight something as soon as that yell happens. Like, oh boy, a pickle. I'm going to solve this. And then it's like, <laughs> yeah, we can kill this monster if we want to. I just roll my eyes like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> okay. You all continue on. We're going to eat some bananas Back to the trail. There. You get the banana. And you make your way towards the, uh, the initial door you came through. It's still <laughs> open from where you forced it. All right. Anything you want to do in this rainforest area before you leave? Uh, we can always check that outwards flow of the stream or, or move on. I've got a rucksack, so I'm going to start collecting some leeches and golden or uh, glowing mushrooms. Absolutely, you do, Jake. What are the rest of you got? Yeah, you know, I've heard urinating on your own feet gets rid of certain sorts of fungal things. I think I'll just go ahead and urinate in this stream, see if that takes care of it. You <laughs> piss on the stream. Surely uh, some algae and fungi die from this. Just doing my part in some small way. <laughs> All right. Uh, Make it a count. The rest of you, uh, Dan, Jeff, Joe. I want to see what's on the other side of the stream. Anyone well, else believe, going with him? I believe I have the Dude, banana. I'll, fo I'll follow him again. Um, I believe job. I have the it's banana with Jeremy. So if he's taking leak, I'll take a leak too. So. Okay. So Steve Joe, here. yeah, Joe, Jeremy, uh, you leave Dan. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, Joe and Jeff. You leave Jeremy and Dan behind as they Team banana and banana dual helix piss into this stream. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> You make it to the end of the stream where the mouth of the cave opens up. And the uh, tea flows it worked, it worked go, it worked. <laughs> You're walking along the piss. Yes. You see yeah, totally. you see the yellow snake through the water following you. Hell that yellow time. snake is pee. <laughs> uh, you guys are gonna move into the mouth of this cave. Yeah, and then sure. the pee. You move in. Uh, you'll have to light your torch again. I'll presume you do. Uh, uh, actually, before I keep going, I want to do the banana thing again where I rub it along some of those glowing things and then sure. drop it in the water. Just kind of try and follow it back a few feet as it drifts. Eventually, the banana stops maybe six feet in. Okay. You come to it and you realize that this is a, a natural sink point 
where the water kind of dips down below the rock level. Uh, loose stone where it can freely kind of filter down. Uh, you see yourself in the entrance of a, a cave, another domed cave. Looking around in this cave with the little light of your banana, the two of you see the floor littered with banana peels and bones. I'm leaving. There is the <laughs> the the sick scent of, we'll call it like, imagine like wet dog and mildew. I'm leaving. <laughs> The nope cave. Hello. <laughs> There's I'm sprinting. There's no money in there. That has so been. Jeff, you're on your own right now. There's no response to your hello. I'm gonna make a mental note that we're gonna run to King Kong, and then I'm gonna start heading heading back. Okay, everything. cool. I don't think I'm gonna go any further by myself. Uh, you all reconvene back at the main entrance where the three others wait with the golden banana. Um, are you ready to go on? I definitely relay. Hey, yeah. we found this room <laughs> full of corpses and banana peels. So do you guys want to check that out? Uh, uh, else is good Lord. Like... That's what happens when you get, when you play with water, that's what happens. <laughs> right. <laughs> Bones and banana peels. Confirmed oh. outcome. So, yeah, I'd, uh, I've got a distinct impression that uh, whatever is in there is somewhere else in here, and maybe it's best we uh, we face it on our own terms rather than on its. It's that's my piece, but hey, I'm just I'm, you know, I'm hourly. You uh, you all figure it out. I just need a Those consensus. Poor, What's the plan? Poor salaried bitches. That's right. I mean, out, right? look around. I'm just waiting to get proper fucked on that bridge with the brass monkeys. Uh, That's agreed. right. Confirmed. Let's get to it, boys. All right. We're going to get fucked. Let's get fucked. You all head back up this, uh, this, this tunnel, this cave, and eventually you find yourself in the, uh, the giant chamber with the bridge and the brass monkeys and the chasm <laughs> who's all carrying the banana I believe okay. it's Jeremy and I still just waiting for our impending doom uh huh uh -huh, you know, uh -huh. uh, I once saw me one of them stage plays it was called Illinois Smith in the in the <laughs> The final crusade or something. And when, they, <laughs> when they took this little, uh, I think it was a Dixie cup and they crossed too far. Everything just came tumbling down. You ever get the feeling that something like that might about to befall us with this here banana? Yes. I'm the only one who saw that. Two thousand year old knight with an ancient secret. <laughs> I don't want to be the ones. I don't want to be the one that's just hanging and just falls to their doom. I am <laughs> attractive. It's my favorite Bollywood movie, Illinois Smith. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Temple of Doom. There's gonna be a monkey on the other side. Yeah. So <laughs> that's fucking golden right there. <laughs> What's going on? Uh, let, let's uh. Here's a, a quick sanity test. Can somebody just go back across the bridge? Sure. I'll, I'll go back across the bridge I'll... very quickly. Nothing yeah. happens. Oh, good. Um, how long is this bridge? 75 feet. That's a long bridge. We got a lot of rope between us. 75 feet, 15 feet wide. Well, okay, see, now we went through the dungeon. Now we're back. Somebody had that smart little rope idea earlier, right? It might be time to have at rope idea. Yeah, uh, uh, I think. Just just wanna... out of fun, just for fun. Jeremy, you and I, do you want to take that banana just close to the bridge and see if those brass monkeys? No, no, I don't want to do that at all until we've got Whoa. the rope set up. Okay, all right. Because all right. I believe in the power of the evil Dixie Cup. 
Uh, <laughs> that's true. That's true. All right. Would we, we be able to just there? I could go across. I'm quite strong. Could we could we tie two of our 50 lengths of rope together? Tie one of them around the banana. Uh, I'll go and then I'll go run across with the rope and then I could just pull the banana across. I'm quite hardy. And then you guys can maybe it's the banana goes across. Last. That's, that's a good idea. We all get across and then we just pull the banana across. Absolutely. The that is definitely a thing yeah. you can do. I mean, I was thinking you were a piece of shit, Mr. Bear. I am <laughs> a piece of shit. That's, that's an unequivocal fact, sir. That is beautiful. But that's a good idea. Piece of shit or no, that's a good idea. <laughs> Does a bear shit in the woods? I don't know, but I know. I, I don't know, gonna... but. What I have to. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> All right. I think that gives me the idea of what your plan is. You guys tie your rope to this banana. You lash all your lengths of rope together. You go to the other side of the bridge, and your intention is to pull the banana across the bridge. Mm. So there's a there's a chasm, right? Yeah. Okay. And we we don't we never figured out how deep it was right no you just peer down you light. see I want to light up my torch and I want to oh. drop my torch and see how yeah yeah if we, we can we can we can work roll me a uh, a roll me three d six uh you see your torch disappear into the darkness uh and after nine seconds it l- disappears out of view roll me another three d six. Now, my ma used to tell me that the time between when you drop the torch and when you hear it clatter, it's like every beat's a mile. So I think it's like nine miles down. Eventually, another <laughs> another uh, 10 seconds after that, you hear a faint dunk of the torch hitting against uh, whatever ground is down there. Too far, I believe. So can we... Uh, can we just push the banana like have someone go across like i'll do it I'll yeah go across with, with 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 the rope and then you all on the other side tie the banana yeah just leave it I on the ground sure the banana is wrapped up in my cloak i want it to be really well well tied and then it's just let it drop into the chasm and swing to the other side and pull it up so it never goes across the bridge the bridge now see what you're okay saying. So I okay want to see if it even if our ropes even can support the weight of it first. Well, just uh, for simplicity's sake, we're going to say the ropes are not a part of this equation. Ropes okay. will do as long as it's not wild. So if you want to well secure the banana on a rope, you do it. You tie that to a length of rope that you can hold on the other side of the can- uh, canyon, you do it. It's not going to fail. The question is, can a bear properly hold the weight of a swinging banana off 75 feet as it drops because it's 75 so all, not just a bear crossed. but i can get some friends yeah as well yeah we'll so get it already gone across so we've never heard of a like crazy perched. chain <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah. is that so your plan we're, we're gonna tug of war the on banana the other side Right, and then we mm-hmm. have the rope stretched across the chasm. Yeah, you're waiting on the other side. We all right. walk across, grab all the other end of the rope behind you, and, and we tug a war the banana. Tug it. Okay. It swing down, and pull it up. This I'm is a complete. I'm my cloak around the banana because I don't want it to break into a bunch of pieces and just fall. Okay, a little yeah. bit of a little bit of uh, Padding. cushioning. Yeah, so I don't see how this could have possibly go wrong. Stay inside the Here's court. what we're gonna do. We're gonna call this a collective. Uh, skill check. I'm gonna each roll of dice you. And that's where this will go wrong. <laughs> each of you gets to roll at disadvantage. If there is one success amongst the five of you, it is a complete success. Can Ooh. I use my one roll? Uh, yes. To roll this at advantage. Yes. Right. So Joe already has a success. Already Jeff a already has a it. success. Uh, the rest of you fail. The they bear all fall over now, and it's just the two of us who now. Yeah, have the yeah, yeah. The the force of the the banana going taut on this line seventy feet down knocks Dan, Jeff, and Jake down to the floor. What? What? But the goblin, I'm sorry, 
I keep saying the wrong name. Jeremy, there's too many fucking J names. It's a lot of J's. It's a lot of James. Dan, <laughs> it's just me. Sorry. Dan, Jeremy, and Jake, you all fall to the ground as Joe and Jeff fucking muster your strength, pull <laughs> tight as this banana thunk. You hear the soft impact of the gold against the stone wall on the your side of the chasm. Uh, everyone gets a chance to get their feet under them as you start pulling this banana up to you. Now don't you let yourself go looking bad in front of your mom. You hold on to that bastard. <laughs> I got it. I got it. You, as you're pulling this banana up on the bridge, you hear a heavy boom, followed by five others. As you look up, you see that the brass monkeys have all animated and drop down off of their chains. Oh, you funky bastards. <laughs> are, they, uh, are they cell shaded or? Uh, They're absolutely cell shaded, yes. <laughs> Borderland style. I was about to say, this is in full Borderland well optimized. Nonsense. So we're Where's gonna move into rip? combat at this point. Oh God. We are gonna say, since you guys did this fantastic planning, you get the banana to safety on your side of the chasm as these five or sorry six brass monkeys start moving off the bridge coming towards you. Uh, you get the distinct impression that their intent is to reclaim this banana. Put our skeletons in a cave. Wait a minute. Are we doing Let's no, roll initiative. Okay. What'd you say, Jeff? Of, uh... I just asked if we were doing initiative. That's all. Okay. Yeah. Initiative. Uh, Jeff, you got a shit 14. 14. Oh, Joe and I both got an 11. Uh, Jake got an advantage on initiative. Damn. Yeah, I've got vigilant. That's one nice. Uh, shit. What am I seeing here? I see. All right. Jeff got that. Jake got that. You got a nine. Uh, Joe got an 11. I also got an 11. Uh, so Joe and Dan, each of you rolled this again. There's Dan with a nine. Joe five. with a five. Uh, Dan, I'm upgrading you to a 12. Yeah. It means I can run away faster. <laughs> First two people grab banana. Run. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, Jeff, you are first with that incredible initiative roll. All right. So how far away from us are the uh, are the monkeys and how far away is the exit? Monkeys, 50 feet. Exit, 30 feet. Um, Bananas setting a few feet from you on the ground with rope tied around it. I've been taking some night, night courses, and I heard that there's this thing called fight or flight response. And uh, and uh, I am, I mean, I'm looking around. If we're closer to the exit, yeah, I feel like we just make a run for it at this point. Uh, yeah. Can I grab the banana, uh, or is, do I have? Does it have to be two? Um. As a giant fucking bear, I'll let you roll to pick up this banana with disadvantage. Fair enough. Good luck, sir. Uh, All right. <sighs> so you start trying to pick up the banana, but it is too much for you to pick up on your own. Uh, I'm going to put a pause on your final action mm -hmm. in case someone wants to come and assist you. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, Dan, you're up next. That's me. You run over and you assist Jeff in picking up this banana. Uh, you two each use your next action to move 25 feet towards the exit, which is only 30 feet away from you, whereas the monkeys were 50 feet away from your initial starting place, which puts the monkeys uh, more than two movement actions from where you now stand with the golden banana. That's sounding promising unless they yeet things also. Joe. The are throwing turns. shit at us. Uh, <laughs> are there any sort of like 
shove mechanics or anything? We would just call it uh, a check versus check. Okay. Um, I'd want to try and wait for them to push me and try and shove them into the chasm. Cool. Uh, we'll say you use a wait. Uh, well, I'll let you take your two actions and wait to see if the required trigger happens. Uh, and then I'll let, we'll roll it off then. Now your um, solid music plays in the background. Yeah. So Dan went, Joe went, next up is Jeremy. The hero we don't deserve. <laughs> well, I suppose the question is, do we do this thing sort of like relay style and maybe me and knives get it a little bit further? Or do we just kind of hold our ground at the door and let them keep running? Either one is a solid option. You're about one action away from where the banana is now. So mm -hmm. I would say I would let you move to them. If Jeremy and Jake, if you two wanted to synchronize your turns, move yeah. to them, grab the banana from them, and then use your other action to move out of the dungeon. Teamwork. Yeah, let's do that. Does that work for yeah, you too? Have a relay, relay race with, with the banana. <laughs> yeah, what was that you were saying, Jeremy? Oh, I was just asking Mr. Knives if he fancies a little little bit of dancing together. Jake? I don't know what that means, but you lead the way. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I do lead. <laughs> you all, you grab the banana. The banana is now outside of the skull. Um, so that moves us, Jeremy, Jake. It is now the six monkeys' turn. Those uh, funky monkeys. Those funky monkeys. Joe is the only one within Bring range. Up the rear. <laughs> uh, if I saw everyone else was leaving, I'll let you out. then take your action and follow them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Just imagine him like leave them to me, and then we, everyone bolts, and he's like, "No, no, don't!" At <laughs> this, everyone's like, "You yeah. got it." <laughs> at this point, we're like, yeah, we're gonna move out of initiative. The rest of you chase after uh, Jeremy and Jake as they move out of the dungeon with the banana. The Dan, Joe, Jeff, you chase after them. After the last one of you is through the skull, the mouth closes hard and fast. Uh, and eventually you hear the sound of the brass monkeys hammering against the inside of the teeth of this giant skull. Um, Before the skull closes as the monkeys are coming in, I want to look back like the last one going in and be like, you lost today, monkeys. But that doesn't mean you got to like it. And then I'm going to throw my hat at them and then I'm going to absolutely oh, yeah. as, a, as a line from that dixie cup movie oh shit <laughs> a really good one. As, well, as all I'm right running out can i pull the pin on all three of my grenades <laughs> and just drop them give me a pulling on all three that's going to be a disadvantage unless you wanted to do you, your your wish roll yeah Ooh, yeah, ooh. I'll do that. Yeah. All right, then give me an advantage test. Make it count. All right. One yeah, Absolutely, you do. Six. You toss your three grenades through the mouth as it closes behind you. Monkeys come and boom, boom, boom as they're hammering against the inside of this thing's and teeth. Boom, boom, boom. And then <laughs> boom, boom, boom as the grenades go off and then silence. Nicely done. Boy. All right. <laughs> so with that, we're going to call this a dungeon successfully delved. Um, congratulations. You have claimed the golden banana. You can sell it for an uh, obscene amount of money. Um, job golden well banana. done. And one gold coin. Yeah. And nobody, uh, and nobody died. Nobody fucking died. Nobody important died. Nobody <laughs> important died. And I've uh, got myself a real fancy Hefeweizen banana troll brain. Group. You sure as oh, fuck yeah. do. Uh, absolutely. Congratulations, you all. You have successfully defeated the dungeon. That's beautiful. Sweet. Awesome. 
So. That fight would have sucked. I know. It sure <laughs> shit would have. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let me walk you through a few things. Uh, you guys figured out the water trap really quick, which was great. <coughs> um, I, I've i ran this dungeon before, and I think it took a long while before the people realized the trick was to not push the button. Yeah, uh, uh, I know I was in one of these runs for sure now. So yeah, the uh, the cave opening we that made it you, out, but yeah, the cave opening that you did not explore that was the troll's lair. That was his home. Since oh. you slayed the troll, there was nothing bad there. And if you would have gone in, you could have explored it, and you would have found if you look at roll twenty a magical sword. Called uh, the plantain. <laughs> <laughs> nice, awesome. Okay. Um, it's like a banana, just tougher. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. That's good um. So, and then yeah, the way that monkey bridge, the way uh, I kind of envisioned it, as you guys hit the kind of the fifty percent point of that bridge all of the monkeys would have dropped down. Mm -hmm. Their goals would have been to recover the golden banana and to push all of you off the sides of the bridge. So mm -hmm. you're, you're thinking with the ropes and to bypass the bridge absolutely saved your necks. Cause that would have been a, an absolutely brutal fight. Um, as you mm -hmm. can all imagine what the health would be for a uh, monkey, monkey made of brass. I, I tried to not talk so much on that one because I remember that. Oh, did you? Specific. Okay. Yeah. I, I remember, uh, I think we drug it across the bridge and triggered the monkeys where we weren't like all the way on the other side yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so we, we had varied success on our escape uh, on we... the playthrough we did. Yeah. So I tried to. Eh. There you go. So yeah, you guys did it. Good job. Nice. Hooray. That was great. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. That was great. It was good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it wasn't. I, guess I yeah. totally forgot that we fought and killed a troll because that layer scared me. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Me too. Me too. I was like. A troll who be likes monkey. bananas. So yeah. the, the, I, the, the trick there with trolls regeneration, it regained one HP per turn per its turn. Uh, Trolls are mortal, so it's been here for countless centuries, tending to that fucking banana uh, orchard, and that's what it's been living off of. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah. And random adventures. I still don't feel bad about blowing his head up, but absolutely yeah, uh, not. Yeah, apparently he you know survived on bananas, adventurers, and grew hand grenade bananas. Yeah, who fucking knows how that worked out? So this is a <laughs> this is a tomb, right? Was there like an actual like someone buried in here? No, anywhere? I just wanted a, a catchy name. Okay. Yeah. I only assume that somebody was turned into a golden banana. It, it's a tomb <laughs> yeah. for all who seek the golden banana. Secretly in the center of the golden banana is a skeleton. Oh, I shit. secretly would love for there to be like a lich King Kong somewhere, and this is his phylactery. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> that would be a beautiful <laughs> follow-up adventure, like the the be. Lich King you, Kong coming after like you. You sell it off to get a bunch of money, but then you find out there's this giant undead, unkillable like King Kong, and you need <laughs> oh, that god. sort of thing back. Oh, man. That would it's like be an amazing. Wheel of Fortune before and after. Yes, that would be a <laughs> Lich King King Kong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's beautiful nice all right uh we finished up right around the two hour mark i'm really digging tiny dungeons it's so simple yeah mm -hmm. it's so it fun. fun uh yeah it's easy peasy yeah it's a great system um i don't know i don't got a lot else so let's go through if any of you got shit you want to plug let's plug it uh, I think I can speak for Dan, Joe, and I. Check out twitch.tv slash Defenders of Cobalt. Uh, if you're on Twitter, you can look us up, Cobalt Defenders. If you're on YouTube, we're Defenders of Cobalt. Uh, we've got 
Joe's running a fifth edition game. Uh, yeah, this Friday. Uh, I'm running all sorts of shit. We got fucking tiny dungeons coming up. Dungeon Crawl Classics. Dark Trails. Uh, I want to run Astonishing Swordsmen and Sorcerers of Hyperborea. I want to jump on the train that Jeff's on. I want to run some Mutant Year Zero because that looks so like good, man. an amazing yeah. game. So much fun. Uh, we do all sorts of shit. You can also find me here on Notorious DMG. And you can find us on every other Friday on uh, twitch.tv slash swyhanderrpg. Um, Jake, Joe, Dan, do you have any other shit you want to plug? Uh, don't be confused by tonight. I roll horribly in all of our games. He usually <laughs> rolls absolute shit. Uh, Jeremy or Jeff, whoever wants to go starts talking first. After you, dwarf. I just love everything these guys do. Anything you hear them talk about, please watch it. Devour every bit of it because they're all amazing. Yeah. All also, right, slice that PayPal check. Thank you, Jeremy. There we go. Uh, yeah. Also, Jeremy, later this, I guess it's going to be in May, uh, Jeremy's going to be playing in a little mini Dark Trails campaign. Uh, you're going to be playing a, what class did you choose? The uh, oh, Bedlamite. The Bedlamite. Cool, crazy person, yeah. Good Absolutely. Choice. That's a good choice. Yeah. Uh, you shared some of the, the fucking mundane uh, inventions you came up with, and they look absolutely badass. So, uh, yeah. Jeremy, you can check him on Grim and Perilous, or you're going to be able to check him out on Defenders of Cobalt. So, uh, two hats right there, man. Good job. Uh, and Jeff. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Adventures in Lollygagging. It's an audio only podcast. Comes out on Mondays anywhere you get podcasts. It's Zweihander, uh, Zweihander campaign. Uh, we're pretty deep into it. Yeah. Uh, we're an intermediate tier at this point. We'll close then cool. on Expert pretty soon. There you uh, go. Maybe not too soon. Uh, I also do, we also do another weekly show on, uh, Zweihander's, uh, RP, Zweihander RPG. They're twitch.tv yeah. slash Zweihander RPG every Thursday. Yep. That's, uh, nine o'clock central. Uh, and so we have, like these little mini short story adventures that are going to kind of link. And so the first one is about this creepy hospital on a creepy Island. Uh, so check that out. And then Fridays, like, uh, like Chuck just said, uh, I've been running mutant year zero gen lab alpha, which is about a uh, post-apocalyptic world, but it's like a bunch of animal mutants. So everyone's playing like, no, we don't have any bears, but you, I could fit. Rody could fit in that universe. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it's a ton of fun. Uh, we just, Strangely enough, we just did like a whole adventure the past two weeks uh, on an on the ape habitat. So there's just a bunch of I've been adding monkeys and bananas on the brand for like <laughs> Amy. Oh man! Two, three weeks. Oh, God. So oh, no, this fits, Amy's. man. Yeah, and then uh, and then soon I don't know when we're gonna probably do it on Mondays, either on this channel, maybe on our own Twitch. I'm not sure. Something like the uh, twitchtv slash the lollygaggers. Yeah, check that out. Uh, we're gonna be doing heart. RPG, which just released, uh, and that's like a Darkest Dungeon type game. So if you've ever yeah. played Darkest Dungeon, is there's a lot. It's just crazy people delving into like a completely unknown alien, massive underground yeah. dungeon, so to speak. So, nice. So, and for players right now on that, it looks like you got Jeremy, you've got myself, and you've got uh, Matt Jowett of Grim and Perilous Studios yeah. as well. What? Yep, yeah. Yeah. I keep telling, nice. I keep saying I want to run something for these guys because I've I've played in games with Chuck now I played in games with Matt so it's, it's my turn. There you go. My turn to step up. So here we so, go. Yeah. Um, yeah. Follow any of us on uh, Twitter. Uh, what's your Twitter? Is it Lollygaggers? At Lollygagger Co. There you go. Uh, you can get us at Cobalt Defenders. Um, Jeremy, I don't know if you got Twitters or not. Uh, I don't double down on those guys because they're amazing. There you go. Uh, <laughs> follow us on Twitter. There's an at Notorious DMG Twitter, but uh, no one's actively running it. Uh, but I tag that shit. So follow us on Twitter and shit, and you'll get uh, it exists. You'll get good updates <laughs> on everything we're doing. There's always fun shit going on. Yeah. Um, with that, uh, I think I want to sign us off. This was a fantastic night. I was happy to run this game for you all. Um, you're all fucking great. This was a blast. Um, so until we see you next time, start fires, do drugs, and wash your fucking hands. Deuces.